To solve the problem of centralization, you introduce more centralization. And then you need oversight over the people who have centralized the centralized system. So you can centrally oversee and audit what they centralized. And in order to do that, you then have to strip away privacy, and you have to strip away independence. And you keep stripping away privacy and independence to keep centralizing things. And the problem is that that kind of slippery slope ends badly. It ends in technologies that are fragile. It ends in technologies um, that have single points of failure, that can be attacked maliciously, that can be hacked and have their funds stolen or that collapse because of a localized uh, problem or disaster. The power goes out, trams are still working, no one can get on because they can't pay their fare. People getting fined and everything. Right, <laughs> or whatever else might come out of that. So for every problem in finance, there is a simple and easy solution. And that solution is wrong, and it's centralized. And then there is a slightly more complex, and until 2008, impossible solution, which is the decentralized solution. And now we're learning how to decentralize everything. We're learning how to take things that previously required centralized solutions. And now we have the option to decentralize them. And just because we have the option doesn't mean we have the foresight or vision to decentralize them. So, for example, you go into Bitcoin and you have a decentralized currency, and some idiot in Japan goes and builds a PHP MySQL database exchange called MT Gox and re-centralizes control over all the keys, and guess what happens next? Right? So you can take a wonderfully decentralized system and make the mistake of trying to re-centralize it. Or you can look at now we have a decentralized toolkit or platform if you like. Let's take the existing financial services networks and see where are they most centralized and which aspects of them can we decentralize. So right? Right. So a MyKey system that ha was based on a decentralized technology wouldn't require updates to be sent to all of the stations, because each station would be able to independently verify every transaction. In fact, they wouldn't need to sync with a blockchain more, um, more often than, say, once a day. If that, because you can actually carry proof on the card itself of the latest blocks. So if I just suddenly show you 100 blocks and they have proof of work behind them, uh, you can deduce that that is a valid proof of work because the effort required to fake that is enormous, right? Like Nobody's going to do it for tram cards. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I saved myself two dollars. It only cost me two million dollars in silicone and electricity to do it, <laughs> um, and I only managed to do it once. <laughs> That's not a, and, and, and that's basically game theory, which is the essence of Bitcoin, which is that it's cheaper to play by the rules than it is to cheat. And that simple mechanism is actually incredibly effective. So all of these centralized problems you get from things like MyKey, uh, which frankly for tourists is completely baffling, right? Um, and, and means that I haven't used the trams. I, I used the, the free one, which was the Circle City Center Circle one. And then I tried to buy a Mikey card, and then it, it, it asked me for seven days and thirty-eight dollars. I'm gonna be here for forty-eight hours. Like no. I'll take taxis instead. And and that is ridiculous. That makes no sense. But it's a barrier to entry for me. Um, yeah, technology is political. Technology has always been political, from the very first technology. Um, and you know, I come from a from the Greek tradition, and we actually talk about this. Part of our culture is is building mythology and stories to describe technology. And one of the one of the myths that I like the most is the myth of Prometheus. And Prometheus stole fire from the gods because until then only the gods had fire, right? And he stole fire from the gods and gave it to man. And then man had fire. And once man had fire, it couldn't be ever taken away again. And for that, Prometheus was punished by the gods. Right? Satoshi is Prometheus. <laughs> he took money from the banks and he gave it to man. And now there's no taking that back. Once you have knowledge, knowledge is eternal. Right? We can keep that knowledge forever. We can recreate Bitcoin forever. You can't shut that thing down. Yeah, so the fact that uh, you know, the, the ancient Greeks 3,000 years ago already knew that technology was political. And they even described a political fight between gods and man over fire, the very first technology. So yeah, it definitely is.